image morphing, an interesting technique in which you can use two images and you know what, I'm just going to show it to you. This is what image morphing looks like. Yeah, I think I look better as a baby. Well, today, let's give that a go using a program called Squirrels Morph. Hello and welcome back to another random Wednesday episode. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about a program called Squirrels Morph. Now, usually I like to cover, well, open source programs, but today's an exception. This program actually has a proprietary license but well, it's free to download, it's free to use. I've reached out to the author and they have very kindly allowed me to make this tutorial. So well, we're just gonna go ahead with it. Personally, I picked this program because I found it just easy to use. Essentially, in a nutshell, what we're doing with Morphing is we're giving it two images and the idea is we want to sort of transform one image to another. Now, two big operations are actually happening here when you do that. First, Notice that certain points are being translated to different positions, so there is a physical warping of positions on the image. Now, this one is quite important and it carries the vast majority of the effect. Do this part right and you get a very nice convincing effect. Do it wrong and things just kind of look weird, so yeah, that's one part where, you know, your input is quite important. On top of that, another thing is actually happening. And that is pixels are being faded from, you know, the version on one image to the version on the other. So there is some element of color fading going on as well. Now that one of course plays a smaller part, but when you're moving from one image to the other, of course you want your end result to look like the other image. And that's why we have to fade to pixels from that image. The way you use this program is extremely simple. You just need to mark out where points on one image correspond to points on the other image. And in fact, with just a few points, you can get, you know, a pretty realistic looking morph from one image to the other. So essentially my goal today, you know, in terms of what I want to cover is more or less just, you know, where all the buttons are on the program, as well as some tips on where the best places to put the points. And well, I'll show you my whole workflow so that at the end of the day, you can actually get started, get moving quite quickly. So yeah, with that in mind, let us jump into our steps. First, you're going to have to find two images that will work with each other. Of course, what that means is if you're blending faces, they do have to have more or less the same angle, if possible, the same orientation, you know, in terms of how the head is rotated like that. The more similar they are, the more convincing the effect is going to be. Of course, you can actually sort of cancel that out by, you know, rotating the image in post-processing so that it's not too huge of a problem. But what you cannot fix is if the faces are sort of turned in a 3D manner. That is, if one picture is sort of looking here and another picture is sort of looking there, there isn't really a way for you to, you know, correct for that in editing. So those two pictures just won't work well together. Honestly, this is the part that is kind of the hardest to do because you're going to have to have a good understanding of how this program works. Then you can pick pictures that are suitable. Anyway, once you have the two pictures, one important thing is that these two pictures must have the exact same dimensions. Now, for me, I'm quite used to cropping things down to, you know, just a fixed square size. So yeah, in your case, pick a size and stick to it for both images. So just very quickly, um, in order to do this cropping, you want to first select the crop tool. Then if you want a squarish image, you want to tick fixed aspect ratio here under the crop tools and type in the ratio one to one. This basically represents a ratio of the width to the height. And this is a term called the aspect ratio. Once you have that, all you need to do is to, well, with the crop tool still selected, just drag, you know, over the area of the picture you want to select. You can still shift your selection around, right? Or drag in the edges to adjust it. It doesn't matter, you know, as long as the shape is the same, we can use some kind of resize operation to bring things to the same size. Once you're happy with your selection, just click once again within the center of your crop, and that will crop the image to the shape you have indicated. Of course, you want to resize the image as well. The current dimensions can be seen up here on the menu bar, 
So, well, in order to resize it, go to image, scale image, and yeah, you just have to type in a set of dimensions here. For me, I'll use something like, I don't know, 1024 by 1024. Obviously, the width and the height must be the same for this image to be square. Yeah, you can type in whatever dimension works the best for you. Again, this part may be a bit difficult if your two pictures are at, you know, very different resolutions because you are either going to have to scale one down by a lot and throw away a lot of information, you know, in the process, or you're going to have to scale up the small one and then make it look all grainy. So yeah, in the best case, you'll have two pictures that are reasonably high resolution and close enough to each other in terms of, you know, their dimensions. Finally, once you have that, you can go ahead and put that into Squirrel's Morph. So alright, this would be the interface of Squirrel's Morph. First, what I'm going to do is, well, I'm just going to grab my two pictures and simply drag and drop them into Squirrel's Morph itself. Now, once you have these two pictures open, well, you are basically ready to get started. Now, your copy of the program may not look exactly like mine because I have actually switched off a couple of toolbars. This is of course to maximize my screen real estate so that, well, it's easier to actually work with stuff. Basically, these are really the only toolbars you need so you can go to view and yeah, turn off some of them if you so desire. I've also rearranged them. You can actually drag and drop any toolbar and just put them at the top, right? So you have a lot of screen space you know, to work with your actual pictures. This will be the main toolbar that you will be interacting with. Essentially, these allow you to add or manipulate points within the pictures. Of course, this is extremely important because points will define how the image actually warps. Also, you have this preview window, which, well, you know, in order to reduce on the computational power, um, the window actually comes by default at a very tiny size. You can always zoom it up and uh, the picture here is actually quite low quality. You can uncheck this box to get higher quality. This program is pretty old. On modern computers, it just runs very quickly anyway. So you don't have to worry too much about, you know, keeping the size small. You will find this toolbar quite useful as well because it basically allows you to move the preview between, well, your two pictures. As you can see, moving the toolbar to this extreme end now shows the other picture. And yeah, I can basically move between the two. By the way, if you need to tile the two pictures nicely, you can click on this button here. Basically, yeah, without it selected, you know, your pictures are just sort of overlapping. You can always resize the window. The picture doesn't resize long, but you can go to view and sort of change the zoom. It's not super elegant, which is why I just prefer to use this. In a click, everything goes to the right place. So let's begin to build our morph. Basically, you have three main tools. This plus tool helps you add new points to the picture. This, of course, removes them, and this helps you move the points around. Normally, your workflow would go like this. On one picture, you will add a couple of points, and they will appear on the other picture, and you will move them. Notice that, you know, when my mouse moves to each window, the tools here actually change accordingly. This is because I have this button here selected, and this is an auto switch function that sort of makes things a little bit quicker for me. Make sure you have this selected, it makes life so much easier. Our control points are kind of subtle to see, right? And when you mouse over one of them, the other one gets highlighted as well. So yeah, that's the gist of it. Let's now go ahead and just do up these two pictures so that we can actually morph between them. Generally, how I like to start is on my first image, I like to mark out three important points that is the corners of the eyes, as well as the chin. As you can see, they're sort of all over the place in the second picture. And well, we'll just go ahead and click on this, move it to the right position and click again. Click on this, move it to the right position, click again. Right, and we repeat this until we get the three points in place. As you can see, the preview image already shows you sort of a better moth between the two pictures. Why this is important is because well, the next time I add a point, these remaining points will help in sort of guiding its position as well. So yeah, the more points you have on screen, the less adjustments you'll actually need to make. Once I'm done with the three main points, I like to then go on to the insides of the eyes now, one, two, as well as the outsides of the mouth. 
see these are sort of in you know fairly close positions so what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna just adjust them slightly to get everything in place right so again the morph gets better now I can zoom in on this one but I think it will become a little bit too huge so let's not do that so yeah your job now is to just keep adding points until you are satisfied with the morph at the end of the day generally what I like to do next is to mark out you know the edges of the nose as well as the top and bottom of the mouth. See, these points are in pretty perfect positions already, but well, some tweaks don't hurt. Um, other points you can add are basically, say, the eyebrows, right? Three, four, and let me get these in place as well. Another place would be the eyes. Depending on how things are, you can sort of mark the top and bottom of the eye or you can simply mark the center. This basically depends on the picture itself. If of course these two people you're trying to blend together have wildly different looking eyes then you might want to use more points. Same deal for say the ears. So what I like to do is I like to mark the tops. As you can see in this case it's pretty far off and what this means is this adjustment here will be very much welcome. It will sort of help a lot in getting things in place. Here's another tip that works quite well. Let's say if you draw a line right between the points outside the mouth and basically extend that line out you know, to where the cheeks are, you can add two more points and basically shift these so that they align in the same way. That helps in sort of getting the face shape back in place. Sometimes I even like to sort of take this curve, right, halve it, place another point there and for these, get them to their corresponding positions as well. Basically halfway in between these two points. So yeah, I think you get the idea. Every set of points we make between the two pictures establishes a correspondence between the two. To get a clearer idea of sort of the mix between these two pictures, you can also sort of go to a different frame, right, a different point within the morph, and to sort of just see how they move from one picture to another. This can give you a better idea of where your points are, you know, where else to introduce additional points, right? For example, in this case, over here at the head, something strange is happening. Maybe we don't want that, so we can add a couple more points here. Say, well, at the temples and right in the middle. See, these are quite far off, so putting them in place here will help quite a bit. As you can see, sort of the weirdness around the head sort of melts away to a certain extent. Now, there is actually another feature we haven't talked about that may make your morph look better or worse depending on your points really, and that is this feature right here, whether we actually want to fix the boundaries of the two images. As you can see in this case, this picture basically is forced to stay within the frame. That's why you see my computer screen sort of here, you know, this picture is sort of here. Now, if I were to turn this off, we are basically allowing that picture to go off frame. So you can basically experiment, you know, with this on or off and sort of just see how things work out, right? Probably one or the other looks better for you. So when you're happy with where all your points are lying and sort of, you know, that picture in the middle, there are two things you can do. You can export this as an animation or you can sort of find the frame you want and export it as a picture. Let's do the picture one first because that's a bit easier to understand. Now let's say I really like this picture, basically I can save it out by clicking on this little button here, which will copy out that image to a new window. See, right here, right? I can then select this window, this is important, make sure the window is actually selected. Then go to file and use save as to export your image. Now there's another way you can do this and that is to actually save it out to a video and that will basically show you the morphing process over time. To do this, first go to Morph and select Period. This basically allows you to set how many frames you actually want to use to sort of show the transformation. The default is 20, that's quite little. I recommend setting it to something like 60 when you play this back, you know, at normal video speeds, which is 30 frames per second. This will take two seconds to run, which is, you know, a fair amount of time. You may also want to hold the start and end images 
you know, so we sort of hold still on the original images for a period of time. You can basically check these two boxes, right, you know, for the start and for the end, and say how many frames you want them to hold for. If we put them at 15, you know, again, assuming normal frame rates of 30 frames per second, this will give you basically half a second of each. Again, a fair amount. Click OK again, and yeah, basically, we are ready to export our output. I recommend exporting this as AVI, so you can see the AVI button here. You'll be asked to give it a file name as well as, you know, where to save it. And yeah, when you give it the name, it will ask you to set the frame rate. Since we have been sort of thinking of things in terms of 30 frames per second, we're going to stick to that. So go ahead and type in 30 here. Now click OK. You'll be asked to choose a codec. Basically, you can look in this list, right, to see if there's anything that is familiar to you. You can also trial and error with the different codecs that are already available. And if none of them work for you, I have a video that sort of goes a little bit in depth into how to set up and install a codec. So you may want to refer to that. That will get you to install this one, the X264 VFW codec, which I personally use for all my videos. So yeah, anyway, with that, go ahead and click OK and this saving process will begin. This could take a while, so yeah, just be patient, you know, let it chew through your animation, you can sort of see it happening in the background here. And yeah, once it's done, well, you have your file on disk. This has just been a very quick run through of my own workflow. There are of course many different things you can do, and you're not just restricted to photos of people. The concept is the same, no matter what pictures you use. So if you like more information or if you'd like to recap on what we've covered so far, you might want to check out the blog post associated with this video. You can find a link to it in the video description. And there you go. Basically, with the skills you've gained today, you should be able to do some pretty interesting morphing effects. We've been using a program called Squirt Morph, so special thanks to the author JJ for allowing me to, well, make this video. But basically, we're done. That's it, go ahead and have fun with this little program. That's all there is for this particular episode. You're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.